evening is our assistant minister, Reverend Anne Shand. And I'm sure she will bring to us words that will inspire, heal, and bless, and leave us with something to chew on as we go, as we leave here this morning. Reverend Anne. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our visitors of the Rotary Club and also those who are joining us in consciousness through the means of the World Wide Web. Last Sunday, Dr. Freddie Clark gave the inspirational reading. It was in the form of three little words, but large in significance. They were evolve or die. These words stuck with me and the universe provided insights which I wish to share this Sunday. In basic science of mind classes, we are taught the significance of the words involution and evolution. Involution precedes evolution. Involution, very simply, is planting the seed thought in the creative mind of the universe. Another way to state it, which I found in the book Spiritual Liberation by Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith. Involution is a prototype inherent within everyone or something. A seed carries the prototype of the tree. Nothing needs to be added, subtracted, or changed within the seed itself. Evolution is the seed becoming more of itself over time. How does that explain us? The glossary of our textbook, The Science of Mind, written by Dr. Ernest Holmes, reminds us that evolution is the passing can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Is the passing of spirit into form. All emerge from that one whose being is ever present and whose life is robed in numberless forms. And it's manifest throughout all creation, end of quote. Our Christian Bible tells us in Genesis 1, verse 27, and I quote, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them, end of quote. Our glossary goes on to say, evolution is the time and the process through which an idea unfolds to a higher state of manifestation. And since ideas are divine realities, evolution goes on forever. We are always evolving, even when we are not aware. Our principles of the beliefs, we have one that says we believe in the eternality, the immortality, and the continuity of the individual soul forever and ever expanding. Spiritual liberation then reminds us that just as a seed needs the proper soil, water, and nutrients to grow into its perfect expression, so are we to nourish the soil of our consciousness in order to evolve into our soul's ever-expanding potential. Part of last week's lesson, practitioner Sonia Brown told us to watch what we feed our souls, the soil of our consciousness. Evolve or die. Evolve into more of ourselves, or die, which means to us our unawareness to living from the consciousness of our true selves. So what about evolving? Evolving into what? Our textbook reminds us of just that. Within myself is that which is perfect, that which is complete, that which is divine, that which was never born and cannot die, that which lives, which is God, the eternal reality. Within myself is peace, poise, power, wholeness, and happiness all the power there is, and all the presence that there is, and all the life there is, is God living Spirit Almighty. And this divine and living Spirit is within me. It is wholeness. It is never weary. It is never tired. It is life. It is complete peace. It is never afraid. It is never confused. It is always poised and peaceful. It is always in a state of perfect equilibrium. This is the truth 
about myself, end of quote. The divine urge that is within us is always propelling us, impelling us to evolve into more of our true selves. That is the purposefulness of spirit within us. It takes determination, a conscious attitude to treat this process with significance and importance, an impelling desire, hunger within to recognize the truth of our being. That is our purpose, which is common to all of us to fully express and live from our divinity. If we are not answering that call, then we must face experiences that are contrary to who we really are. What is the nourishment then we are feeding our souls? Reverend Elmo Lumsden, our founding minister, said these statements which he committed to memory because it was a case of evolution into that image and likeness of God, which she mirrored. And I quote, I shall keep the promise that I have made to myself. I shall never again tell myself that I'm poor, sick, weak, or unhappy. I shall not lie to myself anymore, and I shall daily speak the truth to my inner soul, telling it that it is wonderful and marvelous, that it is one with the great cause of all life, truth, power, and action. I shall whisper these things in my soul until it breaks forth into songs of joy with the realization of its limitless possibilities. We are here to live on purpose. Lives that in every moment we are individualized expressions of the supreme being. We express our spiritual magnificence totally. We realize the presence of God in every thought, word, and action. I'm going to summarize a story that explains why the process of evolution in our spiritual lives is necessary and essential. Adam ran a small store, and it was his practice every morning at 10 o'clock to have coffee with two or more friends. The conversations usually went like this, with Adam leading the floor. He expounded on all topics with an unbending, unshakable belief in his own opinions. He assured that most people were crooks, chiselers, or cheats. No one was to be trusted. The country was fast going to the dogs. The younger generation was hopeless and irredeemable. Politicians were selling the country out to the enemy, and everyone was suspect from the top to the most insignificant. He also suffered from ulcers, rheumatism, and he had no faith in doctors. They had a get-rich mentality. His own business was almost non-existent. He kept the stock so low so that recession would not catch him with much merchandise on board. <laughs> the upcoming recession, he felt, would put all other financial meltdowns into shame. He also had marital woes. His disregard to everyone else's point of view caused the spark of love and romance to wither and die. He went to church every Sunday, could quote the Bible, and one of his comments were, and I quote, how could all this hard luck happen to a righteous, God-fearing man like me? When all the cheats, chiselers, and crooks seem healthy and happy, end of quote. The Bible passages he quoted were, whatsoever man sowed, he was sure to reap, and that whatever a man thinks in his heart, so is he. He distrusted everyone, yet expected friendship and business. He wanted love and cooperation in his household. He had minimum stock, so his, the persons went across the road to a well-stocked shop. His constant fear, negation, and worry did not assist the challenges of health and well-being. This gentleman was a perfect demonstration of the second part of the statement, Evolve or Die. At the time of the story, he was still waiting on God to swoop down from the heavens to segregate the good and bad, and he was going to heaven. This story is not about criticism or judgment. It's just a story about another being like us who believed in a different story of who he really is. It is a lesson of how to truly demonstrate the content of our belief systems and opinions. So let us look at life experience of a being focused on truly evolving into its divine heritage. 
Trodd describes us as miniature reproductions of the original spirit, and our contemplation of it becomes the contemplation of itself from the standpoint of our own individuality. How do we contemplate more of our real selves? What is the process of becoming more of ourselves? How do we be evolved? And by what it means? We focus on our spiritual growth and unfoldment by whatever practices that resonate with our awareness. Practices like meditation, affirmative prayer, courting the silence, study, visioning, centering, sacred service, self-inquiry, mindfulness, yoga, contemplation, visualizing, and other practices that are not named here. As we focus on our growth, incrementally in some persons, rapid in others, our awareness of the presence of God deepens. Our realization of the indwelling presence now becomes a normal way of life. Our hearts open to love, beauty, and compassion. As we step up the evolution of our souls, our vibrations rise, and we attract all that resonate with life, love, light, power, peace, beauty, and joy, which flow into our lives ceaselessly. We co-create a world that works for everyone. We move from satisfying egocentric desires to that of sharing with friends, associates, and family, to that of making a difference on a universal level. If one of us evolved towards true enlightenment, the combined consciousness of us all is, effected, is affected. Persons at the tipping point of individual transformation are able to expand their consciousness. Wherever an evolved being is, there is harmony, beauty, peace, and serenity. Firstly, an evolved person lives in an attitude of gratitude. Thanksgiving is natural to that individual. With the first breath on arising, not even out of bed, the first thought is gratitude for the life of God in us as us. Its intelligence is governing our body temples as well as the body of our affairs. This deep sense of gratitude makes us humble as we contemplate that the awesome universal spirit has chosen to personalize itself through each one of us. We express respect for every individual and for every circumstance contributing to our evolution on this plane. With grateful hearts, we become change agents as we direct our affairs from the communion of spirit within knowing that its wisdom is accessible to us. We utilize it at all times on the premise that if I am lifted up, all others are lifted up as well. Our perception changes to view the world with eyes of purity, going straight to the reality and essence behind every circumstance, every appearance that shows up with eyes of purity. We now view our fellow travelers with gratitude for their participation in our life's journey. This participation in whatever shape or form must enhance our life experience. If it is a lesson, we are fully appreciative of the implications on our unfoldment and attainment. We continue to cultivate the practice of gratitude as we learn to notice even the small things, how we look, how we function as magnificent spiritual beings. Our jobs, profession become areas of enjoyment and play. We are appreciative of our surroundings, our weather, no matter how hot it is or how dry it is but the beauty and majesty of our island. There is so much that we can give thanks for. And once it becomes part of our nature, we lovingly appreciate friends, families, even those who are not a part of our circle, because sometimes they remind us how beautiful we are, even when we forget. So as we automatically bless our world, the vibration around us change as we vision for each other that we all realize our highest potential in this incarnation, as well as we live in harmony with our inner spirit. Secondly, evolved persons give and share from that deep sense of gratitude and appreciation without an agenda. We all understand that we live in an opulent universe, chock full with opportunities and more good. And each one of us is an instrument of its givingness. 
we give sacred service in the spirit of unconditional love, compassion, and loving kindness. That's what Rotary does, right? We move from what am I going to get out of this to a generosity of spirit. The word generosity comes from the Latin root of generosus, characteristic of a noble heart. When an evolved individual give and share, they ennoble and enable another's growth and unfoldment. Yes, we are all working on ourselves, but we do share a quote from a book or an insight that may lift the two or three gathered in my name. A group of the persons in this church has a WhatsApp system, am I correct? Yes. That uplifts and enlightens. Barbara Marx Hubbard of Conscious Evolution calls this ecstatic co-creators. So that's your new name. You, those who participate on that WhatsApp, you are ecstatic co-creators. They assist in feeding the soul, which leads to joy an ecstasy that takes place in the soul as it is able to transcend to a higher level of awareness. Dr. Beckwith suggests something which I can resonate with, a spiritual, challenge, a spiritual strategy that we can employ or execute each day by asking ourselves, how can I give of myself today? This spiritual practice of selflessness that means every interaction or engagement with another becomes an intimate giving of one's wisdom, acceptance, time, energy, skills, mindset, resources, because the vision and mission is to participate in the transformation of each individual from ordinariness to excellence. We operate from the best of ourselves and recognize that others are also giving of their best as well. We give to live, until we live to give. Thirdly, evolved persons who give and share have an open heart of love which enables forgiveness. Forgiveness of self and all other selves are practiced normally. In fact, it is said that if we withhold forgiveness, it can lead to death. The premise is if one withholds something, the universe demonstrates the withhold, which can be experienced in unhealthy body temples, challenging financial affairs, or even relationships. Forgiveness is subtle, especially when one is dealing with one's own self. Dr. Stuart Grayson in the book Spiritual Healing notes that we consistently and constantly need to forgive. He invites us to consider the three R's that lead to the three L's. As we individually resist the forward movement of our lives by not focusing on the truth of our being and the practices that sustain our forward evolution, we are rejecting, the second R, the positive and impelling good that is inherently ours to receive. We rebel against our good, third R, by the beliefs, opinions, and acceptance that we have about ourselves contrary to the truth and its principles. Once we do this, then we have to accept lack as the necessary ingredient, lack of the necessary ingredients for a happy, healthy, fulfilled, creative, productive life. And therefore we suffer from loss and limitation, which is a belief system which is a product of race consciousness. Therefore, we have to forgive all of the above daily because we accept them in consciousness in the subtlest of ways, the television, your neighbor, the telephone. We have to learn to forgive. Even our urge to be right at all times. You know some of us? Sometimes we have to let ourselves off the hook and others too. Because, guess what? Even ourselves and others, they are doing the best that they know how. We can keep our hearts open and forgive with the mindset that there was no intention to hurt anyone. We forgive to keep our thought patterns free from contaminants of resentment, animosity, anger, malice, jealousy, rivalry, and envy. And last thing at night, just forgive for the sake of our peace of mind, everything and everyone. So we can restore our hearts 
to its natural state of love and our actions are now those of kindness and service to our fellow beings. Evolved persons live their lives as a celebratory experience in a highly charged sense of enthusiasm, joy, spontaneity, lightheartedness. That's Reverend, um, Reverend Sonia, no? This highly charged sense of enthusiasm for life, joy, they are spontaneous, they are lighthearted. And guess what? They don't take themselves so seriously. They are always smiling. They are literally happy people with a quiet sense of confidence, security, and joy, which is catchy. It is not that we don't have challenges, issues, or problems, but as Dr. Beckwith reminds us, evolved persons believe problems are a human predicament and not a divine one. Reverend Elmo once said to me, after I came crying, tying up the tissue tightly with a long story, which she listened attentively, and then out of the blue, she declared, but Annie, that is not a cosmic problem. <laughs> when the time comes, you will make the right decision. Just go within. Your answers and cues come from there, end of quote. I could only laugh <laughs> in response to that. Needless to say, she was correct. Look at a baby chick in the shell. The shell is a challenge to the chick. The solution is inherent within the chick. As it evolves, it gradually pecks its own way when it is ready to maintain a life of its own outside of the shell. Our challenges are stepping stones to indicate the areas of our lives that need a new thought pattern. We go within, utilize the intelligence and wisdom that is inherent to us, and we are guided to what to do, when to do it, and who to meet. We are guided to move our feet, but the intention must be to do just that. We cannot receive the cues and stay in one place and expect the God above to swoop down and save the day. Don't work. Our inexhaustible life force, our innate capacity to handle our life experiences have not gone anywhere while we focus our awareness on what we don't want. We focus on what we want to experience and feed the seed thoughts to the soul of our being and then the universe then conspires to manifest the truth of our being. Evolved persons accept their natural propensity to govern their lives and affairs from the truth that we are one with God, living Spirit Almighty. We go within first at all times. We do not imitate anyone. We trust our own inner guidance systems to direct us into paths that allow us to fully realize our potential. The world of effects do not determine our life experience. We do not, we do not wait on the world of effects to approve of us or convince us that we are worthy. No, no, no. We pull up our shoulders, stand up tall, heads up, look directly in front, assume our regal bearing. We are sons and daughters of the divine. We accept nothing less. We live in an environment of excellence by nature of who we are. We do not formulate our life experiences on wishful thinking. Do you remember this quote? When we treat, we do not wish, we know. We do not dream, we state. We do not hope, we accept. We do not beg or beseech, we announce. We do not expect something is going to happen, we believe that it has already happened. And our Bible reminds us in Luke 12, verse 32, it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. We embody our affirmations of truth because our validation comes from within. We are already perfect, whole, and complete. The more opportunities we afford ourselves to go within to listen to that inner voice, the less the voice of the external, sorry, the less the voice of the external world drums in our inner ear. In this instance, it is okay to talk to yourself. <laughs> Evolved persons choose happiness and joy instead of the drama of the exterior. We do not need to be the center of crisis after crisis. We do not need the energy of self-created dramas to sabotage our efforts to evolve. 
We do not need to create the potential conversations of wait till I see him. <laughs> Rehearse any such situation. We don't do that. We identify the triggers thoughts that are lost to spin off in a direction that is not aligned to our highest expression of spirit. And we dissolve the triggers. We use laughter and humor to redirect situations that cannot but serve to separate us from the love and the peace and the harmony that we are. We are content and we exude that completeness. And lastly, evolved persons know the importance and value of a committed period of resting in God by whatever means. Through the silence, meditation, mindfulness walks, but total rest in God, living spirit almighty. The chatter of the technological age does not affect an evolved person. We know that these gadgets are totally useful, but we are not governed by them. Evolved persons know that our spiritual root system requires the nutrients of the infinite in order to be fully present for our life's experience and to meet them with receptivity, clarity, intuition, and confidence. So states Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith. <laughs> As we cultivate the soil of consciousness, friends, by whatever practices, we experience gratitude, giving without an agenda, serving others with a compassionate heart of forgiveness. Our life is now a joyous celebration, not as mere problem solvers, but we consistently choose happiness, creating peace and joy. We are a blessing to this incarnation as we rest in God. We evolve now into an experience of pure love, a life of vision and creativity in a state of bliss and joy because we are one with our indwelling God. Please look to your neighbor and say this affirmation for me. You are an ever-evolving, loving expression of spirit. You are an ever-evolving expression of spirit. Friends, that's what we are. And again, we are reminded Oh, you're still affirming. Yes, it is true. We are ever evolving, loving expressions of spirit. We must evolve. First John 3, verse 2 to 3. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Verse 3, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure, end of quote. Now are we sons and daughters of God. And yes, we may at this time not realize it fully, but when he shall appear, which means when we discover the Christ consciousness within us, then we shall truly experience the reality of our being as the evidence of that will manifest in our physical experience. That truth and hope is planted within each one of us. So we must evolve. We cannot help. All we are required to do is set the intention, pay attention to our inner spirit, and our text states, within each one of us is an indestructible and eternal God-intended man, a perfect being. The highest mental practice is to listen to that inner voice and declare its presence. The greater man's consciousness of the indwelling I am, the more fully he will live." End of quote. So let us, with conviction and certainty, remember that we are perfect beings at our core. We must practice to be evolved beings. We give thanks. We serve each other. We forgive. We celebrate life and we rest in the Almighty. Namaste. Namaste.